Now, my friends, his soul will be returned inside his body, inside his grave. Now it will be the grave's turn. And what will the grave say? The grave will say, Kunta la abghaz man yamshi ala dhahri ilayya. Out of all the people that walked on me, you, Abdullah, was the one I hated most of all. You, O oh Abdullah, was the one I hated most of all. O oh Abdullah, I've been waiting for you all this time. I've been waiting for you to come to me. Now that you have come to me today, today I will make you pay the price. Today you will know how I will deal with you. At that time, my young friends, the grave will embrace him with such force, such force, that the ribs of one side, they will penetrate into the other side. And Rasulullah practically demonstrated this. He took the fingers of his right hand and he placed them in the fingers of his left hand like this. This is what will happen. This is what will happen. And now, the angels Munkar and Nakir will come. Jibra'il Amin on one occasion asked Rasulullah, okay, Ya Rasulullah, I want you to describe these angels for me. So Nabi Kareem Wasallam was told, okay, O Muhammad, without telling you the size of these angels, that their eyes glitter like lightning. Seen a flash of lightning. This is how their eyes glitter. You know their voices rumble like thunder. Their teeth are like the horns of a bull. Their hair reach their feet. The distance between their shoulders is miles apart. You know, if you wanted to cover the distance from one shoulder to other shoulders, it would take you days and days. Rasulullah was told that in these people, there is not even an ounce of mercy inside their hearts. Their mercy is only for the true believers. They will come to everyone. Each one of them will carry a hammer of steel. My young friends, all those within the dunya, from the human kind and jinn kind, if they were to get together just to pick up one of these hammers, never mind moving it an inch, they will not be even be able to move it a millimeter. Not even a millimeter. They will come to him in his grave. They will reproach him. They will reproach him in such a manner. Allah protect that every bone in his body will begin to crack. Every bone, they will reproach him. He will faint. When he comes round, they will ask the three questions. Ya Hadha, Erif Makanak, recognize where you are. Look around you. The dunya has come to an end. You are now inside the grave. Tell us, Man Rabbuk, who is your Lord? You now you and I were sitting here and we're thinking, Yeah, Yar, I read the Kalima La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Who doesn't know the answer to these? Who doesn't know the answer to these? My Lord is Allah, my deen is Islam, and this man is Muhammad. Who doesn't? These are simple. My young friends, you know, in there, if you haven't lived a life according to the teachings of Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know what? Just as those that wine and dine whilst they're alive are whining and dining on deathbed and rather reading the kalima La ilaha illallah, they're uttering nonsense like give me intoxicants to drink. If you spend a life like this, when these angels ask you these simple questions, and indeed they are simple questions, my friends, you will not have the answer. You will have an answer. And at that time, my friends, they will strike him with that mace, with such force, my young friends, that the sparks will spread throughout the grave. Sparks will spread, and it will be said to him, look above, and a door will be opened to paradise. He will look above, the door will be open to paradise. He will be able to see paradise. He will be able to see the blessings of paradise. And it will be said, O oh, enemy of Allah, how do you worship Allah? Then this was your abode. But you didn't. 
Rasulullah at that time swore by his life. He swore by his life, you know, at that time. He will feel such regret, the likes of which he's never felt before. No, that that's when reality will come before his eyes. You know, he's seeing Jahannam. And he knows now that he's been deprived. He knows what's going to happen thereafter. At that time, Rasulullah swore by his life that, that that individual will feel such regret, the likes of which he's never felt before. A door will be open, open towards hell, and it will be said, Oh, I do Allah, or oh, enemy of Allah, this is your abode because you disobeyed Allah. And the hot of fire of Jahannam will keep on entering his grave, and he will roast right till the day of judgment. Hadith of Barai ibn Azim, after the questions, a caller will call out. Give him the clothes of Jahannam, give him the bedding of Jahannam, and open a door towards Jahannam for him. Thereafter, a man will come inside his grave. This man is ugly of face, his clothes are ugly, he stinks. He will come in his grave, and this man will begin to mock. He'll begin to take the mick, and he will say to him, You know what? Good news, glad tidings of what? Of that which troubles you, of that which gives you taklif, of that which brings you pain. You didn't believe. You were just too big to believe. My young friend, this is the day that you were promised. Allah mentioned it in the Quran, what your outcome will be if you reject. Rasulullah mentioned it in hundreds of hadiths, what your outcome will be if you reject. The a'imma on every Jummah would remind you of the consequences. In gatherings like this, you were reminded of these consequences. But you refused to believe. You didn't believe that you were going to die. You didn't believe there will be accountability. You didn't believe that the angel will come. Today, you will pay the price. And he will ask, and who are you? Your face brings bad news. Who are you? He will turn and say to him, you know the bad deeds that you performed in the dunya? I am those deeds. Allah has given me a body so that you can see what you did in the dunya. And my friends, when he can see his deeds before him in the form of a body, black body which literally stinks, which black clothing, my friends, he will begin to beg the Almighty Allah. He will now know what's going to happen, my friends. And he will begin to beg the Almighty Allah. Wallah, I beg you, do not bring the final hour. Do not bring the final hour. Because he knows that whatever happens thereafter will be a million times more severe. And it will keep on increasing and increasing and increasing. And there is no end.